that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Somebody say, I will rejoice. I will. Somebody say, I will rejoice. I will. Somebody say, I will rejoice. I will. Sometimes you got to say it multiple times to convince yourself of what you want to do. You know, sometimes you got to make your own mind up and say, no matter what, I will rejoice. No matter what, I will give God praise. No matter what, I will give God glory. No matter what, I will give God honor. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. 
His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strong. Amen. We can stop right there. Amen. Father God, hide me behind the cross. Let nothing be said or done that is not pleasing unto you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Feed us, we your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. I know some of us have told a praise and worship center may be thinking, we read this scripture about two or three weeks ago. What? We're reading this scripture one more time. We are reading it and going over it one more time because God had need to use it one more time. Amen. There's a couple of things that he, he wants us to go over and he wants us to see yet again. And uh, the Lord had been dealing with me and, and giving me um, this word, not even I thought to teach, but more so for my own personal experience. How many are having life trials? Am I the only one having life trials? Am I the only one like going through? I didn't think I was by myself. I'm not foolish enough to think that I'm by myself. I am having life trials and I knew that you are, my brothers and my sisters, were also experiencing life trials. And in life trials, you just want to sometimes sit down and let somebody else take over. Like, I, you know, you know how sometimes um, you can go to work and you can clock in and you can clock out and while you're at work, there's some things that you should be doing, but when you clock out, it's time for, it's your time. It's just time to pause for the calls, time to rest a little bit, time to gather yourself. Some people take that time to go do whatever they need to do personally, but that, there were some things that have been happening over the past several weeks um, with my husband and I in particular that it made me just want to pause for the calls. I said, if I need a break. I need a sabbatical. Can I push pause on life real quick and just sit here and just enjoy nothingness? Is anybody looking for nothingness? I, I don't need a whole lot. I just need nothing to go all right about now. I need everything just to stop right, you know, right where it is. Don't nothing else mess up. Don't nothing else come down the pike. I just need life to stop and to pause. I said, Lord, what is going on? And he said, well, you need to, you know, seek me a little bit more and you'll find me. And I said, but I'm tired of seeking you. I cannot, can I be honest? It's not that I wasn't seeking him. It's not that I haven't been praying. It's not that I haven't been saying. It's not that I haven't been coming. It's just that the word of scripture says, be not weary and well doing. It's like I'm trying to do everything I know to do that be right. Am I by myself? Is anybody just bent on doing wrong? Anybody? No, you're not bent on doing wrong. I'm trying to do what I know to do. But that which I know to do doesn't seem to be yielding that positive effect. It doesn't be give, seem to be giving me any positive results. And I'm tired of dealing with certain things. I'm tired of going back to the same well, hoping that water will be there, but I come up empty-handed every time. I'm tired of dealing with different things. And so I was going through one thing, like, okay, we can, you know, pace myself, and I'm going to go here and, you know, get catch my breath, and I get to doing some things, and I said, well, Lord, I'm just, you know, I'm tired. I need a break. Yeah. I, you know, I'm just going, you know, Tell the truth. I need a break of, of, about right now. About right now, I'm tired of dealing with certain things, and, and I would like a respite. I would like a sabbatical. And he was like, well, that's not on the agenda. And I said, well, you know, okay. So he had me to get somewhere and to, to pray and to meditate, but to get quiet in what he was saying in the situation. Because the Lord is always speaking, but sometimes we got to get very, very quiet. And then sometimes we got to get very, very patient. And he took me back into reading Matthew 25, 14 through 28. And I thought, like some of you thought, I already read this. We already talked about this. What else is there? He gave him some talent. Somebody did something with it. Somebody didn't do something with it. You know, there's, you know, we get all that. Then he said, well, no, if you go back and you look a little bit deeper, I'm going to give you another revelation about what's going on with these talents. So we're going to walk through the scripture just for a few moments and uh, see if we can see, pick up on what God is saying. For the kingdom of heaven is that a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants. Somebody say his own servants. His own servants. His own servant, that, that be you and that be me. He called his own servant and delivered unto them his goods. Somebody say his goods. His, his goods. He delivered unto them his goods. Some of his goods look like uh, abilities and talents. Some of the, the goods look like perseverance. Anybody know anything about perseverance? Some of the goods sound like endurance. Anybody know about endurance? Some of the goods are positive exhortation. Anybody know about being positive and exhorting other people to be positive? Some of the goods is just contentment. Anybody know? Yeah. And it don't sound like the goods that you would want to 
sale, but these are some of the goods we're going to talk about today. If you would give me the brevity to give a different revelation of the scripture, some goods that he was giving away included positive exhortation, included endurance, included being trustworthy, included being wise, included being faithful. He, he stopped and gave his servants some goods, and to one servant he gave five of those talents and five good things, and another servant he said, I'm going to give you two according to your ability. You got the ability to And so he went on about his way. He that received one went and dug in the earth. So we went a little further. Let me go back up. And he straightway took his journey. That he that had received five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. And likewise, he that had received two also gained two others. Okay. I like that. He that received the one put it in the earth. He thought it was seed for real. Okay. He thought it was really seed. Uh, then it goes on and says, so he that will receive the five talents, in, uh, let's see here. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Now, when you look back at the scripture, I gave you five, you have five excellent qualities, five good qualities about you, five things that are about you that will never change because God gave them to you. Yes. Notice that they were not robbed of those gifts. Yes, all right. They were not robbed yes. of those talents. All right. Notice that no, nothing came to remove what had been given to them. Uh -huh. It was up to them, the servants, to actually exercise what was given to them. Amen. If you are strong, strength will not be robbed from you according to what we're reading here because you just have strength. Yes. You have that level of endurance. If you're bright and you're brilliant and you can see things in an analytical fashion, and you can bring those things out and help somebody else and break it down. That is just a gift that will be given to you. These servants were not robbed of their talents. Yes. But notice also, it doesn't say how long it took the servants to multiply yes. what they had been given. Yes. All it says, is it, we think, is, is anybody like me that when I read like two sentences, I think it was like a 
matter of minutes before they did the thing. Am I the only one to read the paper? I read the chapter, I'm like, oh, it only had, it, that only lasted a day. I would endure it too if it was only a day. No, don't look at it relative to how fast you can read something, but look at it relative to the space of time. He didn't say how long the journey was. He just said after a journey. Y'all know back in biblical days, there were no vehicles. There were no cars. There, there were no cars. There were no planes. There were no trains. There were no automobiles that we know of outside of a horse and a carriage and outside of a donkey or outside of just walking on your two feet. So he had journeyed away for some time, long enough for the servants to do something with what he had given them. Long so, look at it like this. If you are the servant, and you are, just in case you know, you are the servant, and God has given you some things to endure. God has given you some things to work with. God has given you some sustainability. God Somebody else is blind, but it was 
Ray Charles was blind because of a sickness. Stevie Wonder, you know, that looks right. Yeah. Okay, Stevie Wonder was born blind. Now, if you feel, if someone is born with an infirmity or a disability, sometimes they can feel that they have nothing to offer. Yeah. They can feel like they don't have anything to give because they were born with a disability. Or sometimes people make mistakes. Uh -huh. And they feel really, really low about it because they feel like I don't have anything to offer, anything to give. But Stevie Wonder in particular was born with blindness, but is one of the most gifted musicians. Yeah. Yeah. People have to stop looking at what it looks like yeah. or what they can't see because they're blinded right. by what they're not supposed to see any old way. Right. What if someone had passed? his giftings. Uh -huh. You know, all the different artists that have been influenced by Stevie Wonder, all of the different artists that actually work with Stevie Wonder even today, if they had just looked and saw what they felt to be inefficient, because he was blind, he was born blind, but he can play a harmonica better than you and I. And that harmonica, when he started out playing the harmonica and then he began to sing, has made him a multi-millionaire, although he was born blind. Stevie Wonder could have thought just like an individual that had one talent. All I have is one talent. The only talent that I have is to be content. To find that no matter what state I am, there with to be content. What if Stevie Wonder thought that way? All I have is just this one little talent. So I'm going to bury this one little talent in the ground because it's not worth anything. What if your talent that God has given you, although you may think that it's small, it is much larger than what you value it to be. You want to go ahead and accentuate what you got. If all you have Small. These 
that is. Before one word that God has spoken over your life falls to the ground, heaven and earth be over it. And considering that God is not subject to time, he created time. Mind boggling. He created time. But he's not subject to time. So if he said heaven and earth will pass away before my word falls to the ground, y'all know heaven and earth be to pass away now. Yeah, right. He's not waiting on next week for his word to fall to the ground. He's not waiting on it. It's not 2012 or 2017 at 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning that that one word is going to fall to the ground because he's from everlasting to everlasting. While we're sitting here today and he's resting with us today, he also skipped on over into tomorrow and said, I'm waiting for you over here so you'll never walk alone. You'll never be alone. And the word that I have for you is still the word that I have for you. Walk on in the word that I'm giving you because he's not subject to allow the challenges in our life to keep us from doing what God called for us to do. Yes. Don't bury your gift. Because even the one, even if you're looking at it, which you shouldn't look at it in that way, but even if you're looking at it, believing and measuring up your talents against somebody else's talents, you have more than even what you realize that you have. Amen. Because every individual, if they had done what they were supposed to do biblically, would have done they had, which means what you have is actually more than what you have. Yes. The capacity of what you have yes. is more than what you recognize that you have. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. Amen. So even though I have one talent, I actually have two. Yes. But I got to work with what I got. Tell somebody work with what you got. 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 What you got. Ain't nothing wrong with working with what you have. Amen. Work with that thing. Duplicate that thing. Yes. Read it. Quick synopsis. They went, the five went and doubled and got five and he had ten. The two went and doubled and he had four. The one scratching for a minute, but the five that doubled, what did God do? When they went back and presented the gifts of what they had doubled to him and for him, he blessed them. He empowered them with more. Work with what you have. Don't give up no matter what the problem looks like. No matter what the situation looks like, no matter what they say, no matter what they do, don't give up. Yes. Because the responsibility is not even to them directly. Indirectly is to them. The responsibility is to God. Yes. The responsibility is not directly to an individual. I was getting it out of perspective, y'all. I was losing my perspective uh -huh. because I wanted so much to be loved by this one. I wanted so much to be encouraged by that one. And I started losing my perspective because I wasn't getting it. Or it will be sometimes you get it and sometimes you don't. You know, so if they feel like the nut, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you like the nut, sometimes you don't. It was literally that type of situation. And so I had to get my mind back into perspective because I was about to lose my mind about what they thought. I was about to lose my mind about what I thought about what they thought. When my assignment was not to them directly. Indirectly my assignment was to them. Directly my assignment is to him. Did they receive you? And if they didn't receive you, you messed up. No, he's going to say, what did you do? 
God. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also made an intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall it be tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or pale, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hallelujah. We are more than conquerors. And if you are more than the conqueror, then the least that you are is a conqueror. You get that right. If you are more than a conqueror, then the very least that you are is a conqueror. Amen. If we could all stand. Give God praise. Give God glory. Give God honor. Thank you.